Hello Biber, thank you for joining in today's Riga Security Forum session. I'm glad to see you and, uh, and I'm glad to have you involved. As you know, the topic is NATO development over the next deck of the fo following decade and uh, once again I can congratulate for your position and uh, in Latvia we are happy for your success. However, I must say you came to Brussels from London and in London you explained very well to the government, to the, to the people in Latvia about Brexit. The, did Brexit also influence how you think? Did it influence the agenda of NATO? Thank you for the invitation and the demands. I am glad to see you too. Our uh, long-lasting cooperation has been successful and I also congratulate you. Uh, congratulate you as being now a free person and now doing a lot of research and academic work. Uh, and Latvia Institute of uh, for international affairs. This is one of the most important institutes of such, uh, for such topic in Latvia and I will be happy to cooperate with you. Now replying regarding the Brexit and the NATO agenda uh, influence, there is no impact currently. And if some indirect influence occurs at some point, then maybe it will be a different situation, but I, I say it's definitely an indirect influence. So apparently Brexit stays in the second house of Brussels. Yes, of course, everybody wants the relationships to work well with the agreements, because tearing apart any relationship doesn't do any good to any mutual relationships. The political climate is not going to improve. So let's hope that the rational, rational thoughts and the ideas uh, take over. We are going to now talk more about NATO operations and we are going to speak about uh, the threats. General Secretary of NATO uh, and also in Bratislava annual conference, he, he said that NATO must expect the unexpected. This is, this is the phrase uh, I remember. And uh, at the moment when NATO enters its eighth decade in its history, how do you how do you define this unexpected? How NATO defines this unexpected? Of course, NATO is the organization of 30 states and it's a rather large ship. And uh, it's been successful in maintaining peace for its member states and uh, people are used to such uh, situation where there's warrant of security and peace, they can do business, they can sleep at night, at night and uh, we see for the situation in countries which are not member states of NATO, compare, uh, the situation is not that peaceful compared, it's not so collectively secure and the common values of NATO too. We must remember because in the agreement it says that the alliance is formed by the states based on common values and common security. It's not just a sound. So it's a political and military alliance. And here we must be ready for changes in the world. And the changes have occurred. There have been lots of changes and there will be will be even more and NATO is getting prepared for that. And as you, your institute of international affairs and its project also shows that the Secretary General 
is uh, uh, that there are also already thoughts and preparations for 2030 strategy and uh, today we are going to speak about it and of course NATO too internally and also in the Secretariat of International Affairs we are thinking about the challenges what are the scenarios of development larger or smaller uh, impacts influencing our security what we shall do how we should prepare to be ahead of the events and also one aspect we work on is the is the military readiness political unity of course the the center of weight is uh, our core, it's uh, the decisions we make and uh, currently the world is very uh, involved, the members are involved uh, and we share common values with the democratic states in the world. The traditional threats, for example, the unexpected behavior of different countries and we've seen uh, Russia invading Ukraine uh, currently NATO has no enemies but at the same time in the world there are threats which are rather real and Russia's unexpected uh, behavior is one of them also there are things that are not so linked with the territorial integrity but the information security technological development and uh, hybrid threats which may occur from anywhere in the world and here the allies are worried about China's military uh, development and the development of their capabilities and uh, again it's not an aggressor or enemy of NATO but the large investment in their military field and in their technology and again their activities from that we see that they are not uh, willing to get involved in um, making the world more secure so this is one of the threats uh, there are also various organizations uh, which are still being admitted as a threat whether we're talking about the terrorism or we're talking about the relationship between uh, South and North Korea in any case one of the one of the characterizations of such states is that they violate the system they do not comply with the system in which we are and which is based on mutual agreements which is a big global threat to all democratic states in the world so NATO must be globally involved work with their partners closely so these are the topics we are working on and at the same time, of course, the governments are not going to be uh, the ones to do everything uh, or should do. Uh, there are companies currently, very large companies, Google, Amazon, Apple, and we see their significance. We see what they mean in the world, also for our Western communities with their technology, their role thus is going to be in our communication maybe even uh, their role will be more significant than uh, than that of separate states uh, regarding the private sector then we need a private sector involved also and uh, take responsibility and also the, the community each of us 
the people, the citizens of our state, we have a role in avoiding certain threats, inf informational hygiene or just physical hygiene too, and awareness of the fact that we are not spreading the fake information or maybe some not making some negative impact. So this is the resilience of people to, to threats and shocks. This is a challenge, a challenge to all our allies. And this is important. And I think this resilience thus is going to be one of the most important topics uh, as we direct to the summit. You mentioned that terrorism, unfortunately, in Paris, uh, uh, they experienced uh, last week. And this occurs at the moment when in Europe and elsewhere, uh, people are fighting and the governments are fighting with pandemics of COVID-19. In your opinion, is the terrorism a larger threat than pandemics? Well, these are completely different things. However, if we talk about the level of threat uh, from the virus and from terrorism and how we feel it in maybe the pandemics is more felt in, in southern Europe, but here we feel uh, the threat of Russia more and there's such imbalance How is NATO and uh, maybe what are the steps taken by NATO to, uh, to fight these threats also from the viewpoint of pandemics? Uh, NATO definitely does not choose to simply uh, direct their attention to one or the other threat. This, uh, we are focusing on all sorts of threats. And as NATO, it is important for us to be able to, uh, to take action against any uh, threats, cyber uh, threats uh, or space policy now when we are developing. There are also uh, different uh, various uh, activities and measures, uh, whether there's one or the other threat which is larger, I, I don't think we can compare because the crisis as the pand uh, in the form of pandemics, it's, uh, it's related and it's ongoing in all states. And uh, in such situation, uh, not NATO, not any other organization, is not alone, but at the same time we must say that NATO was one of the first to react to pandemics uh, and uh, providing support to civil structures um, with their equipment and transporting the medical staff, uh, also provide the transportation for mobile uh, different uh, medical uh, medical solutions and we saw it uh, internally in different states uh, also we saw the cooperation which uh, was uh, coordinated by NATO definitely from the viewpoint of crisis NATO was one of the most organized and coordinated organizations and uh, had all the capacity and capabilities the military planes, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the uh, knowledge and equipment and medicine could be transported where necessary. About the terrorism in our society, we, we can't say that uh, if or when there were no, uh, as there were no uh, terrorism attacks in Latvia that it isn't important. It is important because it is important to our uh, all our member states and this is how we see uh, in France uh, the Allies are uh, 
uh, all united against these terrorism threats and uh, the alliance thus uh, provides support to fight the terrorism we remember Afghanistan we remember the uh, uh, September attacks in the United States but the France wasn't willing to uh, to implement the However, now in Afghanistan, we see how the talks uh, progress, but uh, we see the progress and uh, the attacks to NATO states from Afghanistan do not occur any anymore. And also in the Mediterranean Sea, we see our uh, military crafts uh, and uh, the we, we do everything that is possible and uh, this week we are going to have on the 22nd and 23rd October NATO ministers board and uh, we're going to decide also on Iraq and uh, we know ISIS and Daesh and other groups which operate there and the next uh, task there is to support the government in fighting the uh, terrorism or terrorist organizations. Uh, you mentioned NATO space policy and if we see NATO 2030 strategy this must be a field where NATO is involved uh, very closely and uh, let's talk about uh, space uh, bases uh, because I understand that the ministers of defense are also deciding on it uh, yes last year the policy was adopted uh, taking into account the capabilities and uh, developments and currently uh, NATO capabilities and capabilities of separate member states uh, are sufficient but we are talking about the communication between various uh, organizations uh, and allies and all the communications working uh, by means of satellites of course uh, it is a topic of a NATO agenda very much so and there have been states uh, trying to uh, test some weapons in space and now NATO should understand what can we do as an organization how can we address this and uh, we should be talking about uh, how NATO addresses this as an alliance, uh, not how separate uh, states do it. Now we're developing the space center and this is going to be uh, a gradual process. And here we also enter the technological uh, question, which is uh, of increasing importance. And you already mentioned China. Is there any uh, joint, uh, policy of NATO, uh, for example, on 5G? Uh, one of the resilience baselines regarding the uh, 5G. It is one of the requirements of NATO, uh, uh, which provided for implementation of 5G uh, for communication and for other uh, resilience related topics. So does NATO have opinion on 5G and China? Yeah, yes, as I said, uh, this is one of the resilience criteria. Uh, the states, uh, the member states must uh, develop 5G networks and they must make sure that it is uh, uh, secure and must uh, provide practical uh, daily operations of it. Uh, the China 
for example, last year, uh, they adopted the declaration, uh, the NATO adopted declaration mentioning China uh, in London summit. What are the main challenges from China, for example, 5G network, anything else, nuclear weapons, uh, in the fields of military technologies maybe, something how NATO is looking at the developments in China. Of course, part of the information, uh, which I know it's uh, classified, but um, it's no secret that the USA is trying to get China involved in uh, nuclear uh, weapon uh, programs and uh, limiting them because uh, China has increased and developed their capabilities and this is related to uh, increase of military capabilities and we've seen that this has been the most rapid growth we've seen uh, between different countries and this uh, again is a threat not only to alliance, to separate member states. Of course, we've seen cyber attacks and the development of different capabilities related to modern technologies on data acquisition and processing and uh, its use. And, in, and at no point do we feel anymore that China is willing to do it with uh, other countries, other states, and that they want to cooperate and uh, also uh, obey uh, certain uh, regulations. And this uh, does uh, mean threat to us. And uh, this was also the topic in London we discussed, and there were separate uh, conclusions drawn and of course there are uh, climate change where without uh, serious involvement of China and not only involvement but also activities in reduction of uh, global warming impact it will be difficult to reach solutions with uh, ever rising uh, pollution and emissions uh, to compare I just I can only say that uh, Europe accounts for 12% of the greenhouse gas emissions, uh, the larger of which being China. So China must be the one of the most responsible partners in this. They must be aware. We do not view them as an enemy. We are not China-phobic, we have, uh, these are our common interests. Also business uh, ties and uh, business network which exists uh, throughout all the world. Of course, it would be easier if we agreed rationally what is possible and what isn't. Does it mean that NATO could uh, uh, could establish a council as there's a NATO-Russia council currently? Is it, would it uh, be beneficial? Because uh, it's important to get involved in a dialogue. Yes, uh, colleagues uh, uh, do uh, conduct discussions and talks. There, there is cooperation. We can't say that there's no communication. However, we are politically military alliance and we are uh, viewing it from a different angle than, for example, the European Union. So there, the cooperation with the European Union is also rather important because the tools which the European Union has, they can create, uh, create impact uh, on on China's uh, activities. Because the China is a major player and uh, maybe there are some advantages that can be seen from, from the viewpoint of trade 
in between uh, the European Union and uh, China. So this is why we are uh, we are maintaining communication with colleagues from the European Union as well. And so I mentioned uh, NATO Russia Council, which I don't remember, but in the 90s, before the expansions began, uh, over those years, uh, the, these were the best years of uh, cooperation between NATO, Russia, people and uh, the partners were talking about uh, even uh, uh, Russia joining NATO, but the time, this time has passed and the question now is whether NATO-Russia Council uh, is, so to say, expired. Well, it's interesting to remember Bucharest summit where there was uh, Putin and there were uh, meetings with uh, of NATO-Russia Council, also with uh, President Medvedev at that time. Uh, there were different times. We've seen them. It's been a state with which we could have a dialogue. We could uh, look at uh, uh, common solutions. And when Syria chemical weapons were destroyed, uh, NATO was uh, communicating about uh, joint activities with Russia. and uh, Russia would support uh, the security. We've had different stages in our relationships, but since uh, uh, occupation of uh, Ukraine and uh, after war in Georgia, which was uh, the first step, and uh, after annexation of Crimea, the relationship have changed completely. If there are people who say that NATO does something wrong or the Western community does something wrong, well, there is no uh, justification to that. Uh, Russia was uh, absolutely aware of what it was doing and uh, they should take responsibility of the consequences. And there is currently a military operation ongoing, which is, which is definitely planned and being organized in Ukraine in the eastern part of Ukraine and it is being organized by Russia. The separating forces are being directed by Russians. So uh, it's difficult to imagine that there is a state doing this and also violates the international agreements in uh, also different ways and it, it's difficult to imagine that we could reach uh, agreements. Uh, at the same time, I want to say that we do not exclude the possibility of um, having Russia uh, comply with uh, international agreements and NATO has said and the uh, Secretary General also expressed that we are ready to uh, sit uh, together and uh, discuss the possible solutions. Everything's possible. There are uh, people who believe that it is important to have a dialogue with Russia, despite Russia actions. And we have witnessed uh, for example, during uh, President Macron's visit, he stressed very much this uh, necessity of dialogue with Russia, whereas uh, in NATO it is important for us to have both dialogue and this security. Uh, it, it's uh, it's topical today too. We have there are uh, diplomatic relationships between NATO and Russia. Uh, there is an open dialogue. It, it however cannot continue as it as it is currently and on the highest level. 
it's not progressing, but uh, it can happen on various levels uh, through embassies and through other uh, points of communication. Well, what are those points of communication which you mention? Well, if there were a possibility of dialogue, where would be this uh, connection point with Russia? Or And also considering the uh, latest events when Russia used chemical weapons in their territory. Now we are aware of uh, cyber attacks also uh, during the Olympic Games, during the planning for Olympic Games. So what are the communication points uh, which we can maintain? Well, the Alliance uh, is ready to speak about the issues. Uh, we, we've had the committees, we've had uh, uh, also our uh, joint position we uh, expressed and published and in summer uh, regarding the cyber attack to health institutions and uh, other cyber attacks we reacted and uh, and condemned. So, so these uh, topics in the community and uh, f important for uh, our alliance, we we, we are not remaining silent uh, uh, silent because we are aware that we should be also talking about some critical uh, events and topics. In the future, though, do you see a NATO Russia Council? And that, how do you see their work? Well, NATO have expressed that uh, has expressed that we are open. Uh, we know what is our agenda. We are not, uh, as uh, Russia uh, Foreign Affairs Ministry, which, uh, for example, says that uh, there is no point of even uh, talking, having communication. What about uh, Ukraine then? and uh, discussions there within uh, NATO-Russia Council. Is it on the agenda? Yes, Ukraine is an uh, important state for cooperation with NATO. It is a cooperating partner. Uh, NATO also participates in uh, exercises. Uh, cooperation there have been uh, long-standing and uh, the Ukrainians uh, share their experience, we share ours. It is definitely, the, the, the issue of Ukraine is uh, on the agenda of NATO-Russia Council. And um, you mentioned the resilience and uh, capabilities of ensuring collective security of the Alliance. There must be certain requirements met and also for NATO forces to be able to be mobile uh, from in between different uh, locations. And here's the question about the military mobility. It's been on the agenda of uh, the European Union, uh, where we see that uh, this question is also related to and uh, is discussed within the uh, Rail Baltica project. But what does NATO currently see? What are the developments of this military mobility? It, it's going to be, it's going to have an impact on us directly. Again, the main tasks of NATO, which is collective security, crisis management and stability, uh, ensure, ensuring the stability, it's not only military task, it is the, uh, it is the security of our people we uh, are also working on and we cannot imagine working with it only in, uh, within military topics. Our collective agreements also talk about being resilient and uh, being compliant with uh, certain rules. Practically, it means, uh, for example, uh, 
uh, addressing uh, certain shocks and uh, and threats and uh, it is related to not only the alliance but also to all the uh, all our citizens and there are guidelines in place and uh, there is the resilience mentioned and th th those regulations are clear there are uh, topics related to mobility uh, road networks different uh, ensuring communication systems uh, including 5g it is related to health protection system resilience and also now uh, during the pandemics we've seen how important it is that there are capabilities uh, uh, of uh, the states to resist and the uh, governments uh, shall continue working shall continue cooperation and communication with their uh, with their citizens. So the guidelines uh, describe it uh, fully and uh, when talking about the mobility, when we think about how there are uh, there are soldiers from Canada, from different other states and also us Latvians are involved in in common security ensuring We've been in Kosovo, in uh, Afghanistan, in Iraq, and also our presence in Lithuania, in Poland, in Estonia. There are NATO forces and units, and uh, this mobility and transportation and strengthening of our forces can only happen uh, if the infrastructure, if the network of roads and the different communication channels is established. So this is indeed of great importance what uh, the, the state does, the government does, what the uh, big uh, companies do. You mentioned also Rail Baltica project and also large private entities, telecommunication companies and here definitely uh, the European Union has its significant role and for the first time in their budget the European Union uh, has uh, one uh, ha has funding for military capability uh, capabilities ensuring because from Germany to Latvia to get from Germany to Latvia well, on the border of Poland, uh, when you are being inspected, uh, uh, are there uh, railroad platforms in place? And maybe th there are just practical things uh, which support the civil infrastructure. It, it is significant, especially for the Baltic states. It is important for it to be present, to be there to ensure uh, the security uh, maintain maintenance capabilities. Well, I feel that our conversation is coming to an end. Uh, once more, I'd like to say thank you very much. Maybe you have a special message with which you'd like to end, considering the fact that our topic is directed to... Uh, we're talking about NATO 2030 strategy. Well. I think it, the message is for the youth. Uh, the youth must understand in our alliance because we, you know, we know uh, how it was to live in the world without NATO. We shouldn't take it for granted uh, that uh, somebody else will care for us. We must care for us, for ourselves. This is uh, one of the most important points. This is our NATO. This is our strategy 2030 and I don't want to even imagine the world without NATO. The fact that we can learn, the fact that we can be happy, think uh, and develop. This is because of us being in, uh, being member of uh, NATO. 
I think this is inspiring. Inspiring is your work in NATO for uh, young people. Thank you.